Hey folks, it's Jared Mananin from the website TahoeTrailGuide.com. Today I wanted to talk about fishers' easy skins for their off-trail and backcountry cross-country skis. The easy skins are used for fishers' line of off-track and backcountry cross-country skis. I have a couple different widths of them. This particular model is the 112 and all of their off-track and backcountry have a really aggressive scale pattern, but there are times when the scale pattern doesn't quite get the job done, and mostly that's during an icy snow condition. And even a spring-like condition where you have a freezing at night and then thawing in the day, and then that cycle continues over and over for days on end, and you end up with boilerplate ice in the morning. This trail was just over a mile long and only gradually uphill, but it was hard as concrete and slick, making for sloppy travel. It's really frustrating to try to make those scale patterns work in those conditions, so I'll use my easy skins for that application, but that's pretty much the only application that I'll use them in. The main reason that I don't use the easy skins in other environments is just because I don't normally need it. That scale pattern on those backcountry, cross-country skis is usually adequate enough, uh, coupled with good technique, of course, to negotiate just about every snow condition. But again, there's just not much you can do in ice with scales. This type of wind-scoured, glazed, and icy snow is where I use those skins most often. So the easy skins, they're not a full skin as you would find on an alpine touring set of skis, for example. They just basically go within the grip zone. In the grip zone of the Fisher backcountry cross-country skis, they have a hole all the way through the top sheet. There's a buckle or a snap that you clip the skin in and then fix it into the grip zone of the scale pattern. They're not super long and they're not super wide either. But they all feature this buckle system here, or this clip system, I guess you could call it, that is real easy to put on. I'll demonstrate right now. And honestly, I'm gonna just leave the one attached to this plastic sleeve here. Feed it up through the bottom there. It comes out and you have to bring that clip just a little bit beyond, and then give it a tug, and then now I can peel the skin off the plastic sheet. And you can reposition it, it's not so sticky that it's impossible to take off, but basically that's it right there. I just put them on, pull them out of the pouch that they come with, or in my case, since I don't use them very often, I'll just keep them in a plastic Ziploc bag in my pack and then pull them out when I need them, which again, is not very often. But anyway, that's it right there. Still on the plastic, feed it up to the top sheet. Make sure it seats into this little clip on the top of the top sheet. Snug it down and then you can just Peel that plastic off and stick it in the middle, just like so. One thing I'd like to point out, however, is that these skins are not the same as the skins you would find on a more traditional classic track ski. those traditional classic track skis actually have a slight uh, recess in the base of the ski or a countersunk space so that the skin goes in it. With these, they're literally sitting on top of the grip zone. One of the main reasons I don't use these very often is I don't get a whole lot of glide with these because now again, you have this raised object in the grip zone. Even with the camber of the ski, keeping the grip zone off the uh, surface of the snow. There's still enough thickness on these in a lot of cases that I end up just dragging and lurching forward when I'm using them. So again, I use them pretty sparingly, mostly just for icy conditions when I'm going uphill. 
This is my least favorite kind of travel and cross-country skis across ice, particularly tracked out in cruddy ice like this. And even after having fixed the easy skins to my skis, I still find myself slipping occasionally. But this is mostly due to the uneven surface. I apologize for belaboring the point that the only real reason to use these skins is in icy conditions, but I've heard repeatedly the same talking points about their ability to glide. But all the scenarios where you'd benefit from gliding with the skins on are the same scenarios where the scale pattern would grip just fine and in fact would provide better gliding capabilities. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate the peace of mind they give me when faced with having to negotiate slick terrain, but I just haven't found them useful in any other circumstance. So I've basically reached a plateau or a flattish area where I don't necessarily need these skins anymore. It's still really firm out here and icy, but because it's flat, I can use just the grip zone on these skis and I'll be fine with them. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the easy skins. I've removed the adhesive part of the skin. Now I just need to pop the buckle out. And as you can see, I just did that with my thumb. Just push it forward and then feed it back through this hole. Feed it from the bottom end of the strip here, the adhesive, just to make sure that the sticky part stays on the plastic. All right, so that's one. Then I'll fix the other one just to the back side of this. All right, and I don't usually worry too much if every bit is stuck to the plastic. I'm putting this in a plastic bag anyway, and Honestly, I suspect I'm going to be putting these back on further up the mountain. Snow is still pretty firm and icy, but... That's the nice thing about using these easy skins is they are easy to use, and you can swap them on and off within just a couple of minutes. Another example of when those easy skins come in handy you wouldn't think it just by looking at this beautiful landscape, but it is late in the season and it's early in the morning, so that low angle of terrain in the foreground is one sheet of ice. It may not be the ideal condition to cross-country ski, but by the time I made my checkpoint and turned around to come back, this snow was nice and soft and made for great downhill turns. Besides, just the views alone are worth getting out for. Thanks to the aggressive scale pattern, that Fisher uses on their off-track variety, backcountry variety of cross-country skis. I generally don't need those skins very often. It's only under the most firm and icy conditions when I know I'm going uphill. No matter how aggressive this is on that icy condition or wind-scoured snow, I tend to do a lot of slipping and sliding. And even with a weighted backpack, which has AVI gear, extra layers, extra food and water, that sort of thing. Even with the extra weight and being able to compress the camber more, just ice is ice and these scale patterns will only grip so much. So having that easy skin is a nice addition, although it becomes more like walking in snowshoes than it does actually cross country skiing, but that's okay. Because the point is going uphill on icier, harder packed snow so that I don't slip backwards constantly. That's more exhausting than anything. Okay folks, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or feedback, post it in the comments section below. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and then go and check out TahoeTrailGuide.com. Take care.